Hi folks, I'm Devok and welcome to the Artificer's Guild, the home of all things Artifact. And welcome to another episode of Hindsight, where we take your games and, with the power of hindsight, tell you exactly where you might have moved differently and what to keep doing in your future games because you were honestly doing pretty well. Don't forget, if you want to take part, all you have to do is send your clips in to submit at theartificersguild.com or head over to our Discord and put them in the game-submit channel and I might just pick out yours for a future video. Anyway, on with today's game. Today we have someone called Tom Angelo, we're just going to call him Tom, and he's going up against Wexort, a bit of a Dota player there. So he's going up against a pretty nasty blue-green deck. Uh, I didn't quite catch what he's playing himself, but we'll see as the game loads up, and that's one thing you should always do by the way. Before you jump into anything, look at what you're against. So we've got a really interesting uh, red-black deck here. I don't know whether he's just not got all of the cards available or if he's really trying to make something new work. But we're definitely going against a meta deck with a slightly less than meta deck. So the advantage is already in our opponent's court. So this is our first turn. We've got some low mana plays. You kind of want to hold on to Intested Grunt. Trading into a creep is not really efficient. So I like what you did there. And you want to find a good spot for your Bronze Legion. That right there is not the right spot. So here, you should have definitely put him next to Axe on this side. Because Zeus has piercing damage whenever he casts a blue spell. So all he has to do is cast two blue spells from Zeus and that Bronze Legionnaire dies for free. Because obviously it goes through his two armor. And that's why Bronze Legionnaires are incredibly strong because of that two armor. So here you're probably going to put Sven mid. But what you really want to be asking is where they're going to put Drag. It's also going to be mid. But as a rule of thumb, Drag players will put their Drow in the safest lane. Which is typically the widest lane. So she was definitely going there. You were always going to put your Sven there whether you're against a Drow or not. But if you're playing against a Drow, you definitely want to try and anticipate where that Drow is going and try and kill it off if you can. Because the enemy is definitely also trying to do the same. So here we can develop a Keen Folk turret. Or we can do something like chuck the Untested Grunt down in front of Drow and develop a Trebuchet. Either is decent here. The enemy is really getting away in this lane though. Um, I quite like Keen Folk turret here because we can kill off Kana. And I think that's what you're going for. So Kana will die, also giving Necrophos health, as will that creep. So Kana is what's really protecting Drow here, because more and more creeps will spawn into this lane. And you know that the enemy doesn't have any items to save that Kana with. So that's actually quite nice. It looks like this lane's going poorly. And to be fair, they are definitely ahead. But, oh, Azus is tanking a lot of damage. So fortunately for him... Oh, sorry, unfortunately for him, unfortunately for you, he's not going to be able to abuse that Bronze Legionnaire, so the placement wasn't too bad. But let's say you placed him on the left of Axe, you'd be swinging on this tower for four, because if the arrow stayed the same, or even not, because the Bronze Legionnaire was so far away from Zeus that he was never going to curve into him. Now, I guess what you were trying to do last time was curve into the Zeus, but the extra four damage wouldn't have mattered, he'd still be on one health. So I much prefer keeping your Bronze Legionnaire, because it's just... Scare, a very scary card. I much would have preferred him being on the left of Axe. So the enemy is now quite clearly saying, I'm going for the left and the mid lane, which you probably could have expected. So you'll only be looking at where you're putting your hero. Axe is effectively stuck in that lane now, unless you get a TP scroll, which you do, and I kind of like here. I'd definitely not buy the Ring of Tarask. I don't think you need it in this game. Uh, Necro is getting a bit low, but the TP scroll would have allowed you to get Axe out. Anyway, placements. Always ask yourself where is the enemy going. That Ogre Magi is going in the first lane. Probably because he has an Aghanim Sanctum there. He's prepping to use something there. Your Sniper, I'd kind of like to follow him. I'd like you to put your Sniper in the first lane. Even if it's just so you can spread your colours evenly. You could also put Sniper mid. You can definitely abuse the, uh, the Drow if you get fortunate there. But I do much prefer this placement, I think. You are almost guaranteed going into Triant, but he's only going to have, yeah, he's got five attacks. So unless he's got some sort of spell to beef that up, you're going to be perfectly fine. Again, remember, gold counting. I, I forget this a lot, and I know you guys will start to uh, pick it up eventually, but the enemy has four gold now. So if he picks up an item, I mean, it's less obvious now, but you should make a mental note that he didn't have much gold. So if he does have an item, it's just going to be a three gold thing. So it's going to be like a salve or something. So yep, he picked up one three gold item. So that's a healing salve or a traveler's cloak. Those are probably the two you expect him to have. And at this point, I'd I'd almost be tempted to drop a ring on sniper. Is there any four mana cards? That, no. Don't do that then. Just yeah. Here is a nice place to put your intestine grunt. I'd probably like to get more cards out of him first. So I'd do the trebuchet 
then the untested grunt. Because once you've played this, the only card left in your hand you can play really is Trebuchet. So I develop the Trebuchet, force out something from him. Of course, he has Agnum Sanctum, so it doesn't matter as much. But anyway, you get something out of him, and then you can play your untested grunt, knowing you're a bit safer and the enemy has fewer options. Here, of course, you're going to be able to take the pass, so you can... He's going to Agnum Sanctum, you're going to be able to pass for initiative, he's going to have to give up initiative to play something again. Initiative doesn't really help you too much, um, but it might help you get your Ring of Tarras down to uh, save your Necrophos. So yeah, there's the, ring, there's the Agonims, so you pass, you've got initiative. We're looking down the line and we're thinking we're relatively happy with initiative because we can almost guarantee we'll have it from the last lane. Because we don't need to do a single thing in that last lane, whereas if he commits anything to that last lane, he will need to use it. Okay, now your sniper needs this ring. If you don't, so he's just played an ignite. That'll do one damage at the start of the turn, which means sniper, after losing five health right now, will be down to one health. So he'll get an upkeep kill on him. And if you're not sure what that means, this means that sniper's now going to die at the beginning of the next action phase. And then he'll still be dead the following action phase, because that's the one turn he'll spend out of action. So he's effectively dead for two whole turns, which is just a little bit crazy. Of course, you are saving your Necrophos, but I mean, you could have Berserker Cool to save the Necrophos if you really wanted to. Like, you've got plenty of options in hand. Well, you've got an option in hand. So this tells me you're really committing to mid lane. Mid lane is where you actually want to fight, and you're okay with Sniper and Ursa dying. Which, to be fair, I'm kind of okay with. You've decided on one of the two lanes you want to fight in, but the enemy does have the upper hand in mid for sure and while you, they haven't taken any damage uh, they haven't done any damage in left they're certainly starting to ramp up there because they have that agonim sanctum they're always going to have a bonus in that lane if he puts karna in that first lane now you're kind of a little bit in trouble even if you put zeus there agonim sanctum and zeus is actually a really nice combo because you can keep just blasting out blue cards procking his ability killing off your the enemy heroes which should be fair, he might do here. If he gets a multicast and then just casts two blue spells, he instantly kills your untested grunt for free. I honestly don't mind which way round he plays his blue heroes, but it needs to be one in left and one in mid. And if he does that, he's probably got the game. Unless he has like an annihilation. Okay, he goes right, so something big is coming over there. This is a very interesting play by him. I don't really like what he did here. Now, Sniper's dead, of course. We had the opportunity to save him, but we chose not to. Um, now the enemy's committed to that final lane, it might well be worth just enraging your Ursa here. You've got two options, really. You can Berserk as cool, kill the enemy two heroes, and just sort of abandon the lane for now. I quite like that as well. It all depends on what he's going to do. When they have an Agnum Sanctum, and this is quite a nice thing as well, if the enemy has an Agnum Sanctum, you know they're going to play their lower value card first, unless it's like a initiative based card, like a Gust or something. So if, for example, Foresight, okay, so he didn't do that, he played Prayer of the Week. That's kind of annoying. So he could have played Foresight, wasted some mana, and that's when you act. I still like this play, it slows him down a lot. It frees up two of your heroes. But that's still 12 damage swinging into you. So that lane is basically even now. So uh, with one nice Prey on the Weak there. And he would have known he had Prey on the Weak in the hand. Prey on the Weak Ignite is a combo you've really got to be scared of. So in this middle lane, you don't have too much to combat with. You can kill the Zeus with a Rising Anger. That's alright. Or with an Enrage. Or just by hitting it and then Keenfolk turreting it. I'd actually quite like to start Keenfolk turreting that Drow. At least make him worried that you're going to kill it. You're really not drawing any way of clearing creeps, but then I guess this deck isn't really good at clearing creeps. You've kind of got to be worried about that. And you had the opportunity to let Necro die. And even if he died, you could have replaced him again in this lane and had a better position. So using the full powers of hindsight that we have, it might well have been worth just letting that Necro die. This play isn't bad either. You're going for the creep that gives him, uh, gives him mana. 
but he's still going to have 7 mana next turn, so he can Zeus ult. Zeus ult. There you go. You can tell I'm from Dota. <laughs> he can use Zeus's signature card, rather, which is uh, Thunder God's Wrath, which does 4 damage to all your heroes. And you, when you're playing against blue especially, it's a lot more so than other cards. You really have to play around their mana curve. So 6 mana is Annihilation. This is the Annihilation turn. And this guy spent money on his deck. He's got a Dry Ranger, like, and a Kana. So he's not, he's not poor, poor McGee. He does have some money. That was a bit of a weird prayer of the week. I know he multicasted it, but still. Okay, he calculated it. Fair enough. I'm okay with that. So, yeah, so you've got to be playing around Annihilation in this last lane because it's six mana. You can't really play around it unless your axe happens to be in front of Karna. Which he is, but then he wouldn't have done enough damage. So, what might I suggest you do? God Strength your axe. I actually like that play. Because if he does then Annihilate, you've still got a God Strength axe. You could also have just saved it and waited for the Berserker's Cool just in case he uses something else. If he summons a bunch of blockers now, and that's the reason you lose, it's because just like me, you jumped the gun. Oh, okay, so he does the Annihilation. Well, like I said, you've got to play around this. And you did that well. You, you saw the Annihilation coming. Sven does die to a Thunder Gods, though. Oh, but he can't play Thunder Gods because you've killed all his blue heroes. Never mind, then. So you have a lot of gold here. Unfortunately, most of your items are pretty cheap. You've got a lot of stone hall stuff. I see a lot of people picking up stone halls. Stone hall cloak is definitely really good. Like stone hall cloak is good. It's probably the second strongest health item in terms of like the easy to get stuff. I really like Clasrim Hourglass. I just think it's it's a massive mind game and it's really nice, really nice to have. But stone hall plate, I maybe it's a one of. I don't think I'd ever include two or three. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get to see the whole deck here, so in terms of giving you advice on the actual deck, I'm not sure I can do that. We've also got to be very ca careful, though. He's got, a, he's got a lot of cards in his hand. He could actually just gust here, and then your Sven is definitely dead from a Thunder Gods in lane one. Oh, no. Sorry, he's not definitely dead because you can equip items, so he definitely shouldn't do that. You're looking for a good place for your Stonehall Elite? There's a few. You can place them in front of any of the units, really. You can threaten Tower here, which is really nice. Uh, I almost like the God Strength or the Enrage. Maybe the Enrage to make sure your Sven doesn't die. Maybe even Rising Anger on Sven and then Enrage. He has no way of dealing two damage straight away with a creep. But instead, you're going to go with blocking. I'm kind of okay with that. I mean... This is the one round you've got a huge advantage in terms of creeps. In terms of creeps, sorry. In terms of heroes, because he has most of his dead and just one up. Yeah, and you see he's passing into you, so you could have quite easily gone for a bit more of an aggressive play. I do like the Stonehall Cloak there. Just to keep your Sven above that 4 damage range. He might have been playing around that, so... So you've got two towers relatively low, what's he going to do? He could quite easily push into right lane, he could also push into left lane. The one thing you can guarantee is that he's not going to put anything else mid. Maybe he puts one blue hero there. Maybe that's the Ogre Magi lane. Because remember, he's probably got more than one Annihilation. And Ogre Magi is the perfect just Annihilation fodder, especially when he's got negative two armor. So if you see him come down, be wary of an Annihilate, no matter what the lane. I... I like the spread. Do you want Axe in that first lane? Probably, because he has a lot of mana to play with. Also, you want Sniper here, definitely, because you have Assassinate up now. The enemy does have initiative. So maybe you shouldn't have played the Cloak on Sven? Man, this game, this game is difficult, just generally. Artifact is a difficult game. You save the Sven by putting the Cloak on him. But then you open yourself up to a uh, Annihilate or something else huge in this first lane. So I like what he's doing here. Putting Karna in the right lane ensures that he's always going to have blockers there. Whereas he's committing the rest of the units over here. And oh, that was such a lucky placement. I mean, so luck is not an excuse, guys. Do not blame things on luck. 
There's a gust. That's kind of annoying. But if Ogre hadn't spawned next to Treant, you could have killed him in one shot with Sniper's ability, which would have been really nice. But it doesn't matter because the enemy played around it, he had initiative, and he gusted straight away. So you now need to survive this turn. He needed to survive last turn. Last turn he was definitely far behind. This turn, you're on the back foot. You've got to survive that just a little bit lo long enough. I kind of like the Keenfolk turret here. Keenfolk turret. Keenfolk musket, rather. What's his stars aligning into? Now, he could refresh into a Selimene's. That Selim incarnation of Selimene, rather. That's one thing you've really got to be worried about. Especially when he starts with the Gust. So you might just be dead to an incarnation of Selimene here. If he's smart, he'll, yeah, play something else. Burn down his mana. Then he'll refresh it. Multicast, so do that again. Unless you don't want to lose that creep in the middle. You lose creeps on the other side as well. If he thinks he can win here, he'll do it. I like that you're looking forward in the other lanes. It's definitely something you should be doing. So yeah, just drawing more cards. He's just going to do this. So now he'll refresh his mana. Drop incarnation. If he doesn't drop incarnation here, then you're extremely lucky that the player doesn't have incarnation. Can multicast it again, I think. Nope. So yeah, you're going to have to get used to passing it. Remember, you do have that Kingfolk Musket and the Healing Salve, so you can break up some of his combos. It's really nice to sort of just keep holding on to these items. I almost would have kept holding on to that armor as well. Until you saw some sort of threat come out and then reactively play it. Because at the moment he's counting. He's counting every single number on this board. But he has some unfactored numbers. He has no idea what items you have either. Because you had so much money when you bought them. That it could literally be anything. You're now threatening mid a lot. And you're threatening right a lot. So he's committing to winning this first lane. I don't know why it's taking him so long to drop his Selimene's. Maybe he's got a two mana card to play first, like a cunning plan. Is he not doing it? Surely not. Surely he... Or maybe... Ah, oh, that's what the draws were for. Oh, okay. No, it wasn't. He has an emissary. So this is also nice. This isn't the end of the game. By any stretch of the imagination. But it's not as game-ending as an incarnation would have been. So unfortunately, your sniper is definitely dead here now. You can't even Keenfoot Musket to get yourself out of here. You can Keenfoot Musket and trade with the Roseleaf Druid, but I don't think that's worth. I think you've kind of got to let this happen. Maybe you put the Keenfoot Musket on Axe. And you take a pot shot at this... I don't know, the tree maybe? He's got a lot of cards. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're playing this right. I quite like this. Let him spend all of his items. It looks like he's allowing the tree to die. So he's only going to have blue mana here next turn. Which, I mean, blue is the scarier version of the mana. But at least it can't be another Emissary or a Thunderhide. Because right now you've just got to protect this left lane. Yeah, he's just letting that tree die. So I like you letting Sniper die too. It's going to be really tricky to hold that left lane now. There isn't necessarily any single play that you, you messed up with on that one. It was just a series of misreading the enemy, I guess. Um, and not playing for initiative when you should have. And to be fair, I, I would have also made those mistakes. I quite easily said, oh yeah, you should play this, 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 and this. And then I went, oh wait, but initiative. Like, it's always an afterthought. Uh, and I suffer from that a lot. I play the game way too quickly. <laughs> I throw all my cards down and then I wonder why I lost. Um, disclaimer, I don't lose that many matches. But yeah, I think the initiative control between rounds is what was really hurting you. It's quite easy to go, I'm in lane one, lane two I need initiative, so that's the play I'm going to make. But it's even harder to be like, okay, I'm in lane three. Next round, in lanes one or two, I need initiative, so I need to hold it here, ready for one of those two lanes. Like, that is a, that's a much harder thing to get a grasp of. So I definitely think that's one thing that almost anyone in this game can work on. 
I also kind of like the Keen Foe Turret there, but maybe he doesn't spend any mana. He could still be just annihilating that lane. The only issue with him annihilating that lane is that he loses initiative. That's a interesting play. So he loses initiative again there. So you definitely pass, go into the next lane, and you just pass. You just hold initiative. You need initiative for that first lane. You need all your cards for that first lane. Oh, what am I talking about? That Keenfolk turret should have gone first lane. Definitely. You need that Keenfolk turret over there. Your Keenfolk turret here does, it isn't really doing you anything. And now you just pass initiative. If he passes now, that effectively is what ended the game soon. He's thinking about whether he should play something or not. And I would be too if I were him. I'd just be like, he just gave me initiative to do two damage to my Kana who isn't dying anyway. Hello? What is he going to do? He goes for a Diabolic Revelation. Okay, so he's still looking for something. Probably still looking for that uh, that incarnation of Salamene. And here, if that Keenfoot turret was in the left lane, you could have picked off that um, Roseleaf Druid. God strength is nice. That puts him on a timer. You don't do not equip the Keenfoot musket here. You need everything you can get in that first lane. Man, you that Keenfoot turret would have been really nice. Okay, now you can potentially musket and kill off the Kana, but I still don't think it's right. Yeah, nice pass. So you have initiative. He probably has all the cards he needs to win. So you need to disrupt him. Unfortunately, I don't think Berserker's Call hits both enemy blue heroes because they're quite spread out. So what are your options? Berserker's Call into Keenfolk's Musket to pick off something that he has. When I mean, you have 13 health, ah, oh, okay, he took it back. Don't get, don't fall for the trap. Do not Keenfolk Musket. It's not worth it. Thank you. So he gets to at least cast one thing before his Ogre Magi dies, right? I don't know what you want here. Yeah, the TP scroll. Maybe the Red Mist Maul to finish off right lane. Like, at this point, buy basically anything you can buy because you have no idea how many... That's unfortunate with your Creeps one, by the way. You have, you have no idea how many more turns there are going to be. So get all of the things on board that you can. That's not always the best way to play, but I, I seem to find that's a really nice way of doing things. Okay, so he's just going to Thunder Gods. Ignite hits your axe for one, Thunder God kills it, and then he wins, right? That's what happens? Yeah. So that was just unfortunate. He had an initiative control card. Maybe that's something your deck could use. There are initiative control cards that you don't... And you surrender. That was, uh, that was unfortunate. So yeah, like I say, there are initiative control cards that you could put into your deck with Fight Through the Pain. But uh, yeah, let's just leave it on the defeat screen there. But generally, even outside of initiative control cards, your initiative control, like I said, between lanes... Could have used a bit of tweaking, but otherwise I think your decision making in what to play when was right. It was more where is your other biggest question. So if I was going to say there's two takeaways, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do bad news and good news. And you always get the bad news first, right? So your bad news is initiative control between rounds. So when you're in that third lane, or even in that second lane, if there's not much going on in the third lane, Try and figure out who needs initiative for the next round. Sometimes you're perfectly happy to pass it over. If they're playing mono blue, no one really plays mono blue, unless you're luminous. So if they're playing mono blue and it's five mana next round, you don't really care about passing them initiative because blue doesn't really have any huge five mana cards, right? No color has huge five mana cards, but so you, you don't fight for initiative on that at the end of mana turn four. But if it's mana turn five moving to six and you've got a huge lane in the first, and they've got one blue hero to deploy, you know they're going to annihilate you. So you have to play for initiative then. So getting ready to play for initiative next round, really key important way to play. And your other thing is your wares. Where are you deploying your units? Where are you deploying your, your improvements? So the trebuchet in mid, he was already committing a lot of resources there. If you put it right, it would have put him on more of a timer. If you put it left... Maybe you would have been able to fight back into that lane a little bit more. More importantly, improvement-wise, is that Keenfolk turret. You needed everything you could get 
to defend yourself over there. In fact, because he thunder gods immediately, I didn't see how much, in fact, let's just go back. We're right here. Let's go back to before he thunder gods you. Okay, so he's doing 16 damage. Okay, no, the thing already died. Never mind. I thought he still had the the uh, unit alive here. So even if you had your two damage here, actually it would have killed Ogre, yeah. So that would have saved your life. If you had a Keenfolk turret, a Keenfolk turret here, he wouldn't have been able to initially go with the Thunder Gods. He would have had to do something else first to make sure Ogre Magi lived. Then you could Berserker's Call and you'd have survived. So knowing exactly where you need your resources, usually many turns ahead is important, but especially just one turn ahead. I think you, you were very good at thinking about the next lane. And again, this comes back into, you need to think about the next round. What's coming up next? And finally, with your wares, just that itch all the way back to the beginning, that bronze legionnaire placement. I didn't like it on the right. Even if you were curving into Zeus, it wouldn't have killed him. Wouldn't have killed him. And it set him up for Zeus's passive to, to end up killing your very important bronze legionnaire. So try and put your units safe if they need to be safe. Or if they need to be aggressive, then you can place them aggressively. Generally though, your play was really good. You knew what to play when. Your sequencing was really nice as well. Like you knew to hold on to your items when your opponent was in the middle of combos. You weren't baited into placing your Keenfolk Musket on the right lane. You didn't completely waste initiative. Like you used it cleverly. So I really liked your sequencing. I think that's something you can take forward uh, and definitely play on as one of your key advantages moving into the future games. Anyway guys, I've been Devok of the Artificers Guild. I hope this hindsight replay helped you guys. It certainly, well, hopefully will help Tom as well. Anyway, hope to see you next time.